Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Keep him, keep him warm. Keep him covered up. Keep him warm. Dodge Just keep him warm. Keep him wrapped up. Keep him warm. Who found him? Me and you. Okay. They heard him crying, and I was like, I, I, I yeah, took the mate. bag, and I was like, oh my uh, god. Which which what? dumpster? The bar. He's right here. Do you know whose baby it is? Is it your baby? No. Is it your baby? No. No, it's nothing. nothing no, we were dumpster no. diving. On the chilly evening of January 7th, 2022, three friends were driving through the tiny town of Hobbs, New Mexico, when the driver, a man by the name of Hector, decided to make a quick stop at the dumpsters behind a local appliance store. These dumpsters were known to sometimes contain older model but still functioning appliances, and Hector just wanted to check them before going home. His girlfriend April and their friend Michael both got out of Hector's pickup truck to help him look. As the trio digs, they start to hear a thin, mewling cry coming from one of the black garbage bags sitting near the top of the dumpster and pull it out, thinking maybe a cat is trapped inside. Hector and Michael paw and nudge at the bag for a few minutes, trying to get it open and see what's inside. Despite their apprehension, the strange sounds cause April to come back over to dig through the bag herself. It's then that all three realize the horrible and shocking truth. The crying isn't a cat at all, but a newborn human infant, a tiny baby boy still with his umbilical cord intact, covered in blood and cold to the touch, wrapped in nothing but a damp and dirty pink bath towel. April immediately snatches up the bundle before Hector calls to her to get in the truck instead where it's warm. As April cradles the weakened infant in the passenger seat, Hector drives over to the road while Michael makes the call to 911. Where's the baby at? He's right here. Where was it at? Let me see you. Here. Do you know whose baby it is? Is it your baby? No. April, is it your baby? No. Let me see. We were dumpster diving. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Poor baby. Oh. 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 You want to put him in the in the unit where yeah. he can warm? Oh my goodness, dude, this towel is wet. Oh. Poor baby. Oh. He's right here. Once the baby is safe and on the way to the hospital, officers immediately spring into action, interviewing the dumpster divers and investigating the dumpster where the baby was found, noting the black garbage bag and collecting it for evidence. After one of the officers notices the security cameras mounted to the roof of the appliance store overlooking the dumpsters, they contact the manager immediately to have him show them the tapes. Hopefully it's clear enough to where they can prosecute. I hope so too. Look, look what she does. I don't know, just toss this. Look at that. Piece of sh It's missing a hubcap on the car too. Okay, so this is the other angle, obviously. Yes. Yeah. It's missing the hubcap on that rear left, yeah. rear passenger. I'm sorry, driver's side, my bad. Yeah. Once the police have the make, model, and partial license plate of the vehicle on the footage, it's easy enough to track down the driver and the home of the registered owner. Hello, how's it going, man? I'm Detective Pettis with the Hospital Police Department. It's Officer Biddick. We have some questions involving this vehicle. Is this your vehicle? Yeah. Okay, do you drive it uh, daily? Daughter your daughter does? Okay, what's your daughter's name? Um, why? I'm sorry? What? Um, how old is your daughter? She's 18. 18, okay. So she's of age. Is she here right now? Yeah, but she's already in bed. She's in bed? Okay. Is there any way we can speak to her? Are you are you both parents? Yes. Okay. Um, do you mind stepping out so we can explain so I can explain something to you? All right. So you're both parents. Your dad. Okay. Is she asleep or? Well, yeah, she's been sick. Uh, she's been sick. Yeah. Okay. She hasn't been to work. She hasn't been to work. What, what's wrong with her? Well, um, I don't know. She just went through. Uh, what's going on with the baby? She just oh, went through her doctor. stomach. Her stomach. Okay. Do you know if she's she's diagnosed with some, something or anything? Or not that I'm, I mean, not that not that you're aware. Said it was a lumbar strain or something. Okay. Did you accompany her to the doctor by chance or anything like that? Okay. All right. Sounds good. When was when was the last time she went to the doctor? Do you know? Yesterday. Yesterday. All right. Awesome. Um. So 
I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Okay, so we this vehicle was involved in a um, abandonment of, of a child. Okay, somebody was driving this vehicle. They went and threw a, a bag, which in the bag was an infant. Okay, a newborn. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why we're here. Not this right. car. That it is this car. That's why we're here. Okay. That that that's earlier today around two p.m. Is there any way you can um, call your daughter? Maybe we can take a look at her and see if you, she's the person we see on the video. I know this is a lot to to take in. I mean, but that's that's where we're at right now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. That's that's where we're investigating right now. So at two p.m. Mm-hmm. He was here at two p.m. Okay, and that's why I asked if who's who drives the vehicle and stuff. She does. She drives. Soon after this contact, the police have Alexis and her parents accompany them to the station for an interview. Explain to me, as far as what happened today, how did your day start today? I was in pain. I was up all night going, I was asleep and I go to the restroom and I mm-hmm. just all hours of the night, all day today. So obviously you gave birth to a child. Right. We're, I'm trying to find out where it happened, how it happened, or what led to that and stuff like that. Uh, um, I... I went to sleep and then I woke up and I went to the restroom and I was just trying and then um, it it came out and I thought it was poop and then it it was I took it to the car I when I was in the car I had put I had two trash bags I took one with me which is the one that I had mm-hmm. and then I. I put it again, and then I was I, I drove around, and I didn't know what to do, and I just put it in there. After this harrowing interview, Alexis is arrested and charged with attempted first-degree murder and felony abuse of a child. Hi, Alexis. <laughs> Alexis. I'm Officer Cario. If you could do me a favor and stand up. Okay. For right now, go ahead and stand up, okay? We'll let you finish talking to mom here in a second. If you want to step over here for me, turn around and place your hands behind your back. So the detective will talk to you after we get you booked in it, okay? Do you have anything else on you that you want to leave with them? No? We'll just have you step over here, okay? Okay. Do think you're too something to Additional investigation led to the discovery that the contents of the trash bag the baby was found in contained numerous other articles that police could tie directly to the young mother, such as several empty drink cans and water bottles that could contain traces of DNA, a handwritten post-it note with Alexis's full name on it, and most damningly, the prescription for her inhaler which of course contained her full information. They also conducted an interview with the baby's father in the following never-before-seen interview, where he informed police of several details concerning his knowledge of Alexis's pregnancy. Apparently, Alexis, despite claiming to police that she hadn't known she was pregnant, had at one point informed the 16-year-old father that she was, though she implied to him that she had miscarried after they broke up a couple months later. Was the issue ever brought up about the whole pregnancy? Did she ever mention anything, or did she keep posting about you know videos about the miscarriage? No, she never no. posted any videos. About okay, it. but you said she that, posted them. Um... No, she didn't post it. She sent me videos of other people that had. Posted. Okay, okay, she was following another TikTok. Right, right. Like, yeah. yeah. Did she ever mention anything about anything? No. As far as being pregnant, about nothing at all. No. Did you ever ask, or did you ever I, ask her if she needed? I. I didn't really feel the need that I needed to. Did you ever notify your parents at the time that at one point she was pregnant? No, I was scared that to tell my dad because I am still young, so I never informed him. But you guys didn't really talk about it other than after she had stated that she had miscarried, we just left the whole baby situation. Obviously, you know, we all found out. And how did you find out? Who makes you aware of it? Um, I, was, I, was, I mean the video, but did she ever? I was asleep, so then when I woke up, I woke up to about five different people calling me. Okay. And I did answer my friend Hyman, the one that was aware of her being pregnant, but and aware of the 
abortion or whatever. And then when I answered, he's like, did you see what happened? And then I was still halfway asleep. I woke up around three in the afternoon, stayed up all night, Saturday night okay. on the game. So then when I woke up, I answered it. And then I have my mom walking in. Well, did you see what happened with Lexi? And then my dad calls and I was like, okay, something has to be wrong if my mom and my dad are calling. Mm-hmm. So then I answered it. My dad's, he's, he's upset. He's yelling. He's like, you need to get up. And I'm so then I'm still halfway asleep. I'm like, well, what do I do? Like, I'm, I'm barely waking up. He's like, why the hell haven't you answered your phone? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm asleep. Like, and then finally I, I call my friend back. He's like, uh, did you see where what Lexi did? And I was like, uh, no, not yet. And then my mom showed me the video as I'm on the phone with him. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Let me call you back later. Hung up through my phone. Got up, ran to the shower, got in the shower, and then I got out. I told my, I called my dad. What do I need to do? What What is it that? Where do I need to go? What is it that I need to say or do or like? What is it? Basically, just what do I need to do? Okay. And from there, he calmed me down. And then, well, let me ask you. I'm sorry. I don't mean. No, to, no you're good. So, mm-hmm. so do I need? Do I need like uh, security for him? No. Or no? I don't know. I'm just saying. Actually, it's probably a, the best time as possible because I have two new SROs starting okay. on Tuesday. Okay. Um, and so we'll have plenty of officers at the high school. We'll have three cops up there. In April of 2023, a jury convicted Alexis Nicole Avila of child abuse involving great bodily harm. The following month, she was sentenced to a mandatory 18 years in prison for throwing her newborn son in a dumpster. Although her public defender did manage to get two years shaved off this sentence for mental health reasons, the court was notably unsympathetic to the defense's assertion that Alexis, having acted the way she did, had something to do with previously undiagnosed bipolar disorder. According to the presiding judge, it was only for luck and the grace of God that the sentence wasn't for murder, Alexis said in a statement to the court. I regret his first hours of life were traumatic, and I regret that he will always have this in the back of his head, and will think I don't love him because that's what he'll read and hear, she said. But that's not true at all. I do love him. I truly do. The baby, who survived his ordeal and is reportedly in good health today, lives with his father and his family. One bright spot to come out of this ordeal is that this case caused New Mexico to review the state's safe haven laws, which are laws that allow parents to anonymously surrender their newborns safely, without criminal charges. Now, funds will be provided to build baby boxes in several areas to facilitate the safety of infants all over New Mexico, hopefully preventing something like this from happening again. However, in late October of 2023, there was an unexpected development in the case. Ultimately, Alexis was released pending the outcome of her recent appeal. She's currently waiting on a date for the state Supreme Court to rule on the appeal. 